Hi, welcome to Favor Church Online. My name is James, and I'm so glad that you are joining with us today. You know, we've got a great service in store for you, and if this is your first time, we'd love to connect with you. You know, all the details to connect with our church are found in the description below. You can click on any one of those links or scan one of the QR codes that come up on the screen. We really hope you feel God's presence wherever you're watching this from today. We love you, have a great service. Welcome to Favorite Church Online. We are so glad that you have tuned in. Why don't you share this service right now so that your family and your friends can be a part of it also. And hey, we're gonna worship God and I wanna encourage you, church, why don't you give Him your best today? So come on, stand to your feet, clap your hands, turn the volume up, and come on, let's pray. Come on, put your hands together.
before we sing this new song, I want to encourage you as what the Bible says in Psalms 34 verse 3, it says there, Oh, magnify the Lord. Let us exalt His name together. So wherever you are, whoever's with you, whether you're with your family, with your friends, with your relatives, come on, set the atmosphere of worship. Amen. Come on, let's get into worship, God. Thank you, Jesus.
through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written. Jesus Christ, my living home. Hallelujah, praise the one who sent me free.
It is so amazing the atmosphere that is here. And, and right now, wherever you are, you can create that atmosphere. The God who's given us victory. We're going to keep on praising him. And, and you know, there's, there's a passage of scripture that I love, and it's found in the book of Acts, and it says this. It says that we, in him, we live and we move and we have our being. And I don't know where you are right now. I don't know what situation is that you're going through in your life, but it's in him that we have life. It's not in your bank account. It's not in your situation. It's not even in the circumstances around you, but it's in him. And so God, right now, I pray, Lord, and we declare that you are life. And whatever need you have, I just want you to lift your hands and begin to receive from heaven the life that he wants to give to you. God, we receive your life. And we pray for every single need right now. We pray for physical, emotional, financial needs. And God, I pray, Lord, that you would give us life. We thank you so much. And we love you. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hey, come on. Let's give God a praise. Wow. What an amazing time of worship. Man, we are so glad that you've joined us in case we haven't met. My name is Willem, and I'm part of the team here at Favor. And we're going to continue our worship through our giving. And in a moment, there's going to be boxes that pop up, and you can give through all these different channels, whether it's Gcash, PayMaya, uh, or, or different banks or, or, or PayPal if you're abroad. And, and here at Favor, we believe that giving comes from the heart. Giving is a conviction and, and not just a compulsion. And so right now, if you could just pull out your phones and begin to give because we believe that giving matters. And so let me, let me just pray for us. God, I pray for this time. I pray for our giving. I pray for every single peso every single dollar that's given lord and i pray that this would be good seed that would be multiplied and god i pray that this would be used to bring more people to you and god today i especially want to pray for those who can't give god i pray that you would bless them i pray that you would pour your favor and your provision on them lord in jesus name we pray amen amen hey we are so glad that you're here Welcome to Favor Church Online. Hey, you know, if it's your first time, we want to know who you are. Hey, when I was growing up, we would embarrass all the first timers. We'd bring them up stage and they would say a few things about them and, and they would be terrified, but we're not going to have you do that. But if it's your first time, we want to get to know you. Would you mind just commenting on the box, you know, whether on, you're on YouTube or, or Kumu? If you're on Facebook, there's going to be a box that pops up. And just let us know that you're new because we want to we want to get to know you and we want to give you a digital gift pack but that's not it if you're in metro manila hey we are going to physically send somebody to your place of residence and we are going to give you a bag full of goodies and information about our church and so if you're new hey right now can you just type i'm new and we would love to get to know you Hey, there is so much happening in our church in the, in the next coming weeks. Hey, so let's check out this week's edition of Favorite News. Hey, what is up, Favor fam? Welcome to this week's edition of Favor News. We've got so many things happening throughout the week, so let's get started with Build. Build is our Christian foundation course, and it's starting on July 25 for four Saturdays from 2 to 4 p.m. So if you want to be part of that, sign up at favor.church slash build. Build your faith, build foundations, and build relationships. Our Mid-Year Presence Week starts tomorrow until Friday. Tune in on Monday and Wednesday for our prayer nights, and on Friday, our favorite Friday of the month, Presence Night. All happening at 8 p.m. on live.favor.church and our social media channels. It's going to be a week full of the presence of God, so see you there, fam. 
At Favorite Church, we love to celebrate milestones, so let's congratulate Brandon and Zeti Mendrano, who got married on the 4th of July, and also our very own creative power couple, Max and Micah Maximo, who got married last Tuesday. Congratulations, guys. Aside from this service, we've got a service for kids, high school students, and a service with Filipino sign language interpretation. If you want to know when these are taking place, visit favor.church slash schedule. Or if you want to know more about our church, join a connect group, or see what we're doing in this season, visit favor.church slash next. If you want to stay up to date with everything that's happening here, follow us on our social media channels popping up on your screen right now. And that is it for Favor News. Hey, welcome to Favor Church Online today. I am, you have no idea how happy I am. I am so excited because I've got human beings sitting all around me today. Because of the new laws of the Filipino government, we are allowed up to 10% capacity of our building, which means that we can have basically 40 people in here. And so we got some of our staff, some of our great team that are here today. So I'm excited. You have no idea how happy I can walk through the crowd, social distance. Hello, po. Kamusta po? Big time God. <laughs> Pastor Chat preached a great Tiglish message, our first one, but I'm just so excited to be here. We've got cameras all over the place as well. We're going to have a good day. You know, I started uh, last week a series called I Am a Carrier in our church, and, uh, and I love this series because it's talking about who we are as Christians and, and also kind of on a, just a, another level, who we are as people a part of Favor Church. Last week, I talked about the presence of God. And, you know, when we talk about being a carrier and especially talking about carrying the presence of God, when you're a carrier, uh, you, you don't just have a disease or an infection, you carry it and spread it to those around you. And last week we talked about how when we want to be a carrier with the presence of God. In our church, we value the presence of God so highly. It's, it, we, it, without it, what are we doing? We can fake everything in our church except the presence of God. And I don't just want to be in an atmosphere where the presence of God is. I want to take it with me and I want to begin to carry it out to the rest of my world. You know, in every environment that you walked in, we talked about how there is one culture. If there's two cultures, one of those cultures will die at one point because only one culture will always exist. And in our church, in our culture here, we have a kingdom culture and it's made up of five different values, which makes up a whole lot of other things. Last week, we talked about presence. Today, the title of my message is simply this. It's, uh, I'm a carrier that prays. I am a carrier that prays. And uh, I want to talk about prayer. And I think that this is so timely today to talk about prayer because tomorrow we start our mid-year presence week, which is our prayer and fasting week for the next five days, Monday to Friday. We are praying. We are fasting. I want to encourage you uh, that if you've never, ever fasted before, I want to encourage you fast. Uh, we believe, we've taught this in our church many times, that biblical fasting is fasting some sort of food. But as well, I want to encourage you to fast anything that can be a distraction from taking you away from being intentional about spending time with the Lord. So some people say, well, I'm going to just fast, you know, social media this week. Cool. That's good because that's a distraction that will take time away from you and God. But biblically, the Bible is very, very clear that fasting is some sort of food as well. Why? Because as we go without food, we're saying, I rely on you to actually keep me going. So whether it's fasting a food, fasting a meal, or fasting everything, or doing whatever, I don't care whatever it is, Daniel fast, uh, uh, liquid fast, just make sure, you know, liquid fast doesn't mean that, that you, you know, wait for ice cream to melt and then drink it. Uh, don't do that. But, you know, whatever it is, you know, get your heart right, get your, get your uh, self prepared, because I think God's going to do incredible miracles. You know, when we're talking about prayer, prayer, prayer is is something that is so, so vital in our Christian walk and especially within our church. 
And prayer, even though in our church, right, I know this is gonna sound a little bit weird, we have a department called prayer in our church. It, we've got a prayer team. It's people that have signed up to be a part of this prayer team. They pray in our services. They pray midweek. They pray for all the prayer requests that come in. We love it. And even though we have this prayer team, this sort of department that is this this prayer team, the reality is this, is that prayer should not just be designated to the prayer team. And even though we have it, I don't kind of love this idea of making this special team that's just uh, full of people that prayer because what happens is this, is it means that as a Christian, as I'm here, if I'm Liz, one of our, one of our well, she is our exec pastor, she's great. If Liz is then a Christian and there's something going on in her life, what can happen is, is that when we have the prayer team over here, which is full of our spiritual people, Paul and Arlene, Albie's already shaking under the power of God, right? <laughs> what happens is this, is that Liz, be like, oh, well, I've got this need. I don't need to pray about this because we got a prayer team over there. They're the ones that can pray. They're the ones that can do it. And she, what does she do? She delegates what should be her responsibility as a Christian to a department. No, that's not how God works. Prayer is for every Christ follower. In our church, we don't have a special intercessor department, right? Now, listen to me carefully because some of y'all are going to get offended and I'm totally fine with it. I've grown up in church, and so if you're new to church, you don't even know what this is, so you don't even care, which is great, but, but there will be people that have grown up in church, and you know the intercessory department, and a lot of times it's full of old women that pray, and I just want to just firstly say this, thank God for the old women that pray. I'm here because of old women that have prayed for me my whole life, but what can happen sometimes is that when you have this intercessory prayer department, right, where the interse- we're, the inter- we're the intercessors, <laughs> Right, and they get, and it becomes this thing where, where it becomes this group, and they're like the self-designated uh, eagles, like a, oh, oh, oh. I don't know what an eagle sounds like, <laughs> right? Like, and and it's like they become these eagles that walk around, be giving prophetic words all out in the foyer of church, and, and being the holy spiritual ones, and they're this, and and all of a sudden it's all the intercessory prayers, and and this this is my pro- intercessory. Uh, uh, prayer people are amazing. I'm not talking about them as people. I'm talking about the spirit that can sometimes grow, which is pride. Because we are the ones that pray. We are the anointed ones to pray. Can I tell you this? If you have Christ inside of you, you are anointed to pray. There are people that have a larger capacity for it. and, And so they should Pray and they should go, but, but I never want to create in our church, because remember, this is about, you know, really talking about our church, who we are as a church. I don't ever want a department that is full of people, full of pride, that we are the intercessors and we are above everybody else, and then we here, we feel so intimidated by the intercessors, and we do, I, I don't want that in our church. You know, even, even within our church, I'm very passionate about making sure that everybody knows that they have the ability to pray. You know, one of the things that we do in our church, and, and uh, Kate and I, we did this in our old church, and my, my sister was so passionate about this and instilled it into us, is, is we do prayer uh, in our services at the beginning of worship. Now, when we come back, can I just, I just want to time out. The moment we get 50% capacity allowed by the government, we are doing church. Uh, we are already talking about renting a larger venue so that we can have people in. Worship just before, I hope you felt what was in the room just before. I was crying just with 40 people around. There was just something different, this tangible atmosphere. So I'm so excited. So whenever uh, in, in Manila here, when we get 50% capacity, we're going straight back to church. But one of the things that we did that we may not be able to do for a season because of social distancing, but we'll work it out how we can do it, is that we invite people forward for prayer at worship. Whenever we start worship, we go, if you've got a prayer need, come forward because we want, we want every person that comes to church to be able to receive prayer for a need that they have. And so people walk forward and pray. And you know what's one of the things is I never go forward and pray for people. People have asked me, why don't you do that, pastor? Why don't you go forward and you pray for people like there's something? And and you know, the the reason why I rarely do it, I I do it sometimes if I feel the Lord leading me, but the reason why I rarely do it is this. I wanted to create a culture within our church that you don't need the pastor to pray for you. You know, one of the things that annoys me 
is when I've heard other people say this, oh, you know, I'm sick, I've got a cold, I've got this, can you pray for me? And they say this, oh, no, 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 you need this person to pray because they've got the gift of healing on their life. Yes, some people may have an enlarged measure of the gift of healing, but don't relegate and delegate to somebody else what God has called you to do. Every person has the measure of the presence of God in them and can pray. And so when I don't go down the front and pray, it's not because I'm lazy or it's not because I don't believe in it. What I'm trying to do is send the message that whoever from our team prays, the same spirit that lives in them is the same spirit that lived and raised Jesus from the dead is the same spirit that's in me. And so you don't need some pastor to come and pray for you. You just need a spirit-filled believer to come and pray. I love this, this quote by Chris Hodges, he's a great, great uh, pastor in the States. He says, if God answered your prayers, would it change the world or just you? It's amazing, you know what I found in prayer is that prayer can either reveal your generosity or reveal your selfishness. And this quote is just so timely when it comes to this. What a great quote. And how we're praying, are we, are we praying prayers that are just for ourselves? And then they're good and we should pray. We should pray for our needs, we should pray for our wants. But if God really answered all our prayers, yes, would it change just us or would it change the world? You know, I got a couple of thoughts about prayer in our church that I want to share with you, and then we're going to pray, and it's going to be good. First one is this. Prayer isn't just about getting what you want. Prayer isn't just about getting what you want. Uh, Psalm chapter 37, verse 4 is a scripture that is beautiful. It's short. Uh, it has so much weight, yet is so taken out of context. It says, take delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. And so we think this, if I take delight in the Lord, I'm going to enjoy, I, I'm going to enjoy the Lord. And as I enjoy the Lord, which is easy, come on, it's easy to enjoy the Lord, to enjoy his benefits, to enjoy his gifts. As I enjoy the Lord, then I'm going to get the desires of my heart. So if you're single and your desire is that girl or that boy, you know who I'm talking about, and they're there and you're like, oh, as I take you know, the delight in the Lord, then the desire is going to come and I'm going to get what I want, get what I want. That's not what the scripture is meaning. In fact, when it talks about taking delight in the Lord, what happens is as you delight in the Lord, he will begin to shape, change, and mold your heart and mold your desires to reflect his desires. This is actually what that verse means, and it lines up with the teaching on prayer in the rest of the Bible. It lines up with what it says in 1 John chapter 5, verse 14. It says, this is the confidence that we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us, ready? And if we know he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we asked of him. Again, people are like, oh, great, I, I could just ask him. Whatever I ask, I'm going to get. No, the key in this scripture is this, is that if we ask anything according to his will, if it's according to his will, he's going to say yes, because it's his will. So how do you get his will? Take delight in him. As you take delight in him, he'll begin to change your heart. I, I joke about this all the time, but it's true. If it's his will for you to have a Ferrari, God bless you, then pray for it, and then come and pick me up. <laughs> Let's go for a spin. That might be God's will for your life. I don't know. But if it's not God's will, then stop praying for it. Take delight in him, and as you take delight in him, you'll begin, your heart will begin to change, and it'll begin to come in line with what his desires are for you. The depth of my prayer life is not about what I want from God and getting what I want, but developing a deeper relationship with him through conversation. You know, answered prayers do not determine the success of my prayer life. Greater trust in God is the true fruit of an active prayer life. Some people think, oh, look at that person, all their answered prayers. Man, they must be so close to God. No. Answered prayers don't determine your success. It's a greater trust in intimacy because prayer is ultimately, here's the thing, right? As much as we pray for needs, we pray for wants, and we pray for breakthroughs, prayer is ultimately about growing more intimate with God. And this helps me so much because whenever I'm faced with these thoughts, now listen, this is one of the thoughts that I'm faced with. And if I'm faced with it as a pastor, uh, I'm sure you're faced with this all the time is this. Why do I need to pray 
if God's already, you know, got everything worked out and it's going to happen anyway? Right? Have you ever thought that? Like, why should I pray then? Because it's already going to happen. God knows the beginning from the end. So it's going to pray already. It's not like I can just change God's mind and now he knows everything. Well, here's the thing. If you've reduced prayer to just praying for things when you want something, you're not praying to God, you're praying to Santa Claus. If that's all prayer is for you, like I just want what I want and pray for, or what's the point of praying because it's already gonna happen? No, you've just reduced God to a big fat white guy in a red suit that's coming down your chimney at Christmas time, which is the weirdest thing to tell our children. Right, that's all you've reduced God to. But if you look at what prayer is, which is this, it's an intimacy that is building a relationship with God, then no matter what God's answer is, you're building relationship with him. And God always answers your prayer. The thing is, sometimes the answer is no. Oh, which we hate. We hate it when he says no. God, I want that person. No. Why? <laughs> he always, some people are like, God's not answering my prayer. Yes, he is. He said no. Or he said, wait. Or he said, not yet. Amen. I've taught on this before. Intimacy, right? Intimacy equals trust. And there's no way that's better than to build your trust in the Lord than by being okay with his no. There's no better way to learn trust than by submitting to a no when really you want a yes. You know, when people say, you know, just about my leadership, as a leader, people go, man, I trust you, James. I'm like, cool. I don't believe you. (laughs) People are like, what? (laughs) That's, That's weird. I don't believe anyone trusts me until I say no to something that they want a yes and yet they still submit. Because you don't trust me. It's easy to follow someone when you agree with everything that they say. That's not trust, that's agreement. Trust, true trust, is when you're looking at someone and go, I, I think that we should do this, but you're choosing this, but because I trust you, I'm gonna submit to you and, I'm gonna, and, and, and when you have trust, you then have intimacy. And those people that I have led that have said, you know what, I, I actually think it's this way, but I'm gonna trust you because you're the leader. You know what happens? We always become more intimate in our relationship. Why? Because I feel their trust. I feel the submission. And it's the exact same with God. One of the greatest ways to grow your intimacy with God is to accept his no and is to be okay with it. And if we approach prayer as an opportunity to grow deeper in our relationship with God, then it aligns us to his will. And no matter what the answer we receive, we will have trust and intimacy and it will grow. And ultimately prayer is a conversation with God. That's what it is. People try and, 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 and complicate prayer, but it's not that complicated. Prayer is a conversation. What do you do when you converse? You talk and then you listen. Some people in your life, like Albie, don't listen a lot. They just talk. <laughs> but over time, they learn to listen. Good, good, right? no conversation. You talk and you listen. And as I talk, you begin to hear my heart. And as I listen, I begin to hear your heart. And we converse. That's what prayer is. That's why I love speaking in tongues. Mm, shakaruba. I love it. I love speaking in tongues because when we begin to speak in tongues, what's happening is, is that we're having this conversation with God, this, this heavenly language with God that we're speaking. And it's this connection straight from us to him. And now here's what's cool about God. I, I love the way that, that God always seems to bless us whenever we give something to him. We don't give something to him just to receive the blessing. When I worship God, I'm not doing it just to receive something. I worship God because he is worthy of my worship. But I love that God is a generous 
generous God. And every time I seem to worship God, I seem to get a measure of his presence come back on me. When I speak in tongues, even though it's a prayer language that I may not understand what I'm saying, but my spirit is praying and connecting with God. What I love about it, and the book of Jude says that I actually edify and build myself up when I pray in tongues. And it's a conversation that I'm happening with God. I mean, Paul, the apostle Paul, that wrote three quarters of the New Testament said in 1 Corinthians, I thank God I speak in tongues more than all of you. That is a glowing endorsement of speaking in tongues in your prayer life. I wanna encourage you that if you're not filled and baptized with the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues, reach out to us right now. Write on it, say, hey, I want that, I want that, and we will come and pray. What's awesome is on our online church platform right now at live.favor.church, you can actually go there and type, I want prayer, and one of our prayer team uh, are going to actually pray for you. And if you want to be filled, I believe that God is powerful enough that he can fill you with his Holy Ghost right where you are and you can begin to speak in tongues. It will take your prayer life to a whole new level. And when we speak in tongues, it's not just about speaking in meetings. It's not just about doing it in prayer meetings, but it's doing it in your everyday life. I speak in tongues when I ride my scooter to work. People just think that I'm some European guy speaking on the phone. <laughs> right? But I'm speaking in tongues. Why? Because it's in that prayer that I, and I love speaking in tongues as well because you know why? I, it's a reflective of that statement I made because as I'm praying, I know that I'm not just praying for myself. I'm praying for things that I may not even be aware of, but I'm praying for it. And I know that my, ch- my prayers will change the world, not just myself. Second point is this, prayer is the first, not the last option. Prayer should never be our last option. It should always be our first option. It should be our first line of defense and also our first line of attack. And it's amazing how many people try and work everything out before they pray. And I'm not saying this to you, I'm saying this to me. I do this, I do this. We try and work, we got a problem, what do we do? We go to the bank. We got a problem, we go to the doctor. We go to the psychologist, to the counselor. We go to the personal trainer. We go to, we go, we go to all these things, right? And so many times as Christians, listen, we would all say that prayer is important, but, and I'm not trying to say this to shame you or guilt you because I wanna be the first to say, I have done this many times where I have gone to the human solution that I have control over first rather than going to God in prayer first. Now listen, all these things are great. Go to the doctor. I'm not one of these crazy preachers that's like, no, just pray. No, go to the doctor. But on your way to the doctor, you better be praying before you get there. Go to the bank to work out your issues with your loan. But on your way there, you better be praying on your way there. When you go to that psychologist, psychologists are great, but pray on the way there and pray on the way home as well. Prayer should be the first line. Not just the last option. And this happens. And, and, and listen, I'm talking just to church people at the moment with this. But of course, we know this happens with unchurched people all the time. Why? We have so many people turn up in our church. Why do they turn up? Because someone they love is sick or they're sick or they have no money. And what do they do? Well, I got nothing left. Doctors have said there's no hope. So what am I going to do now? Well, why don't we try the big fella upstairs? Yeah. <laughs> right? So you know what I'm saying when I say that prayer is is so many times looked at as sort of this last option. I'll try and do everything else before I get there. No, prayer can't be the last option. It's got to be the first option. I remember uh, last year, my daughter, Sienna, uh, who during this lockdown period has just been an angel. Uh, If you're a part of our church, you, you you, you know my daughter, Sienna, and if she's watching right now, I love you. Her, she has just grown so much in this lockdown period. I am so proud of her. And, uh, and she's, she's wild. She's going to change the world. Uh, but now she's listening to me already, which is just <laughs> prayer works, everybody. <laughs> Look at me. Prayer works. I just want you to know my daughter, prayer works. I pray over her. Every, I've cried tears about you. And prayer works. Right? And so my daughter, Sienna, right? Uh, she hurt her arm. And, and she hurt her arm, she fell, she hit her arm, and she was sitting on the couch, and she was uh, screaming in pain. And as a parent, uh, all the parents, you know this, as a parent, you know the difference 
between a I'm crying because I'm a kid and I'm crying because of actual pain, right? You know, right? It, it, there's a different, whether it's your wife or your child, you know that, that, that cry of, of pain. And, uh, and her, her, her cry that she began to cry and scream, it wasn't just I'm a, I'm a three-year-old brat that's just crying. It was this genuine something is wrong with my arm. And I remember Kate, Kate and I rushed out. And it's so good having you here as I preach. I miss you so much. I haven't been able to touch you in four months because of social distancing. Uh, so, so Kate and I ran out, and Kate began to, to touch her arm. And even as, as Kate just went like this, just touched the arm, her cry, it was like this scream of pain. And I was there, and I've, as a dad, you're like, oh, we've never had a broken bone before in our family. You know, uh, how am we going to do, you know, like, uh, how are we going to do this? Where's the hospital? And, uh, and so in that moment, both Kate and I just, just laid hands on her and just began to pray, God, whatever this is right now, God, we pray that you would heal it. If its bone is broken, if it's out, like, heal it now in the name of Jesus. And she's like, yeah, and she's screaming. <laughs> it's what, but it's the first thing we did. And, and then, you know, it was the second thing we did. I went to the doctor. <laughs> Listen to me, go to the doctor. On the way there, she's there, she's crying, and, I, and I'm praying, and I'm laying hands on her, going, God, heal her right now, whatever this is. And, and if not, help the doctor to be able to find out what it is. And I'm praying on the way. We go to the doctor. She begins to get a little bit better. We go, we take x-rays, we do the whole thing. By the end of the time that we were there with the x-rays, they came back, she was not crying. The x-ray came and showed nothing wrong with her arm. We went and had lunch, and she was just went back to screaming and crying at lunch as a three-year-old brat, not because of her arm at the time. And here's the thing. I'm not saying the arm was broken. If you want to you know, say that, then that's fine. I'm not going to say that. But this is what I know. We prayed, and the arm wasn't broken. And I believe that God did something in that moment. I really do. And what I'm most proud of is not that God did something, but the first reaction that my wife had and both I, and I had was this, let's go to God in prayer. Let's go. And I could tell you story upon story of people that have gone to God as their first reaction. Go to God first, not last. Go to him first. You know, when we pray, I said this before, but I love this thought about prayer being both attacking and being defensive. The way that we usually pray as Christians is defensive. What does that mean? We pray reactive prayers. Something happens, oh God, you gotta come help me. You gotta come help that situation. COVID's here, God, help us, right? We pray this almost defensive, we're on the back foot and we're reacting prayers. And, and those prayers are good and we should always pray them and they'll always be needed in life that we do. But, but I wanna encourage you to not just pray defensive prayers, but to pray attacking prayers in your life where you wake up in the morning and you don't wait to get sick before you pray, but you wake up and declare over yourself, hey God, today, keep me safe. Keep me healthy today. God, today I pray for financial prosperity in my life to come over myself and my family and the people around me. And as we begin to pray these attacking prayers, what are we doing? We're praying against the devil. It's a battle out there. I'm not going to call it a war. It's a battle. Why? Because the war's already been won through what Jesus Christ did. The war is over, but we have spiritual battles that we have to fight every day. Now listen to me. Don't go searching for a devil under every doorknob. Don't do it. Don't wake up and spend 30 minutes every day loosening this and binding that and renouncing this and shoo, shoo, shoo getting the blood of Jesus on this and on that and on everything, right? Don't, don't start looking why. And, and I'm not saying that it's not, I just said we're in a battle. There's spiritual warfare going on. There is a battle, but here's the issue. When you wake up in the morning and start looking for the devil under every doorknob, you are praying for victory instead of praying from victory. When you wake up and pray from victory, you don't need to go looking for the devil. You just pray prayers of light. And the light goes out and begins to find the darkness. And there are some things, that, hear me, I'm not saying don't do it, but what I'm saying is this, don't put all your effort and energy into making the devil bigger than what he actually is. The church, the church has given the devil more power than anyone else because of how we pray. We pray, we pray like the devil's actually got power over us. He doesn't. Pray from 
victory. The Bible says no weapon formed against you shall prosper. So why don't we live like we actually believe that no weapon against us is going to prosper? Paul writes in Ephesians chapter 6 about putting on the the, the spiritual uh, armor of God. He talks about both attacking and both defensive bits of this armor. And then at the end of this beautiful passage in Ephesians 6, he gets to verse 18 and he says this, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Pray also for me that whenever I speak, words may be given, uh, may be given me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. Paul is saying, pray attacking prayers. He's saying, pray in the spirit and pray for me. Why? Because I'm about to preach the gospel. So I need you to pray for me so that as I preach this, pray an attacking prayer that we're taking ground back from the enemy. Church, favorite church. If you're watching from another church, God bless you. Or you don't go to church, God bless you. But favorite church, could I ask you this? Could you pray for me and for all the other pastors in our church as we preach the mysteries of the gospel that it would be made known? You know, when you actually begin to pray for your pastors, you're not just praying for yourself, but you're praying for the world, that as we reach out into the world, that, that as I speak, that the mysteries of the gospel would become uh, uh, unmysterious to people and they would be able to grasp who Jesus is. Pray for us. Pray attacking prayers for us, not just defensive, reactive ones. My last point is this. Are you doing okay? Are you guys doing okay? Yeah. So good to have you all here. Jay! (laughs) All right, third last point is this. Prayer shifts the atmosphere. Prayer shifts the atmosphere. Have you ever been in a room? Have you ever been in a room where people started praying? And it just, you're like, ooh, something just happened. It It just shifts. Right now, there's people watching that the atmosphere in your room is anxiety. It's fear, it's depression, it's loneliness, it's bitterness, it's anger, it's bad relationships that you have, right? And what happens is, is that when you begin to pray, prayer has the ability to shift atmospheres of not just a room, but of your life. It says this in Philippians chapter four and verse six, it says, do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace, I love this verse, the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. What does that mean? That simply means this. It says, hey, uh, uh, don't be anxious about anything. Well, how about this? The Bible said anything. Well, how about my relationship? That doesn't include in anything. How about my finances? I don't have a job. I got fired in COVID. That's okay. That's included in anything. All right, so don't be anxious about it, but instead pray about everything. What's everything? Even that relationship, yep, that's everything. Pray about it. Pray about it, and this is what's gonna happen. As you pray, you might not get a job. The scripture does not say God will answer your request the way that you want him to answer it. That's not what the scripture says. You know what the scripture says? It says, don't be anxious, pray about everything, and this is what's gonna happen. As you pray, the peace of God, which transcends, you are not going to understand fully what is happening, but it is not just going to come upon you. I love it. This has been a revelation that I've been uh, uh, really delving into recently, that the peace of God is not just gonna come on you, but it's actually going to guard your heart. That, that's a different ball game. It's not just coming on you, but it's guarding your heart so that when you walk into atmospheres and you struggled with depression and with loneliness and you walk into an atmosphere full of depression and loneliness, God's peace is gonna guard your heart from entering in and falling back into that depression or falling back into that loneliness. So what do you do? If you know you're going there, begin to pray. Begin to pray. If you got issues with your family and it's Christmas time, what do you do? Pray. When you're driving there, pray. When you're there, speak in tongues under your breath. 
Do it. Pray. The peace of God, which you won't even understand, it will come and it will guard your hearts and your minds. Prayer will shift your environment. Peace will come. It's hard to fight with your spouse if you pray. Come on, married people said amen. You got it, Willem. It's hard to fight. It is so hard. It's, it's hard. Me and Kate have had, me and Kate, Kate and I have had wicked fights. Wicked. I don't know why you're saying amen, John. Like, you've been there? Have you been? We've had a few in my office as well. That's when the blind goes down in the office. People think we're kissing. We're not. We're fighting. And uh, we've, had some, we've had some amazing fights. And there's been moments, it's usually me at the end that says, come on, let's pray. And... Uh, and, and what's awesome is, is when she's, when she's still angry, because it's like, I'm like, come on, we need to pray, <laughs> right? She, she don't want to do it. Why? Because when you begin to pray, your heart changes and she don't want to change. She, she wants to stay angry. She wants, she want to hold on to that anger like a soft cushion wrapped around her chest. I don't want to let go of my anger, right? And the moment that I begin to pray, what happens? Heart begin to soft, right? Now, I know that makes Kate look bad. I don't mean to dishonor my wife, uh, but you know, that happens all the time. And uh, <laughs> but what, happens with, what happens with us? It softens our hearts and we begin to pray. And there's been so many times where we've, we have fought big fights. We are, we are an imperfect couple leading an imperfect church. So if you're married and you fought and you think, does anyone else do it? Yes. You should see Pastor Willem's marriage. And uh, <laughs> come on now, right? We have had fights, right? But when we pray at the end, something happens. And, and it, there's a shift in the atmosphere of our room. There's just something that shifts and changes when we pray and, and, and God comes in and he softens it. Whether it's our marriage, whether it's your, your finances or your business or whether it's your relationships, I am praying that there would be a shift inside of us. I'm believing this year in our mid-year mid presence week fast that there's gonna be a shift in the atmosphere of your business a shift in the atmosphere of your unemployment right now, a shift in the atmosphere of your family or your relationships. We, what are we doing? We're seeking God. We're putting aside food. We're putting aside distractions and we are relying on God. We're saying, God, I'm really hungry. This is why it's so good to fast food, right? Because this is the Philippines. Come on now, if you're watching in the Philippines, what do we do? We love Jesu Cristo and we love food, right? And so, so what we're saying is, God, I'm putting aside food and I'm trusting you that even though I'm hungry, I'm not gonna die. Because sometimes we feel like that after one meal. That's why I love fasting food. Because it, it, it builds something inside of me. Go, God, I really need to trust you. And so what we're doing, we're putting aside food. We're putting aside distraction. We're saying, God, I'm trusting in you. I need you in this season. I'm praying that that depression in that household would be gone in Jesus' name. The atmosphere to be shifted. Those relationships that you're struggling with, that the atmosphere would change instantly. You know, through prayer, we seek the kingdom of God. As we pray, we are seeking the kingdom of God. And you know what the Bible tells us about that? In Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, it says this, but seek his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. Prayer, when it comes to our church, when it comes to who we are as a church, prayer, this is a value that makes up our culture. Prayer is not our last option, it's our first option. It's our first option attack and it's our first defense is prayer we believe that supernaturally through prayer people can be healed physically of of illnesses in their body we believe that finances can just grow supernaturally we believe relationships can be healed and mended and restored we believe what we believe it through prayer and if all those things that we pray for don't happen the way that we want it to happen ultimately you know it's the greatest thing about prayer you and I will become more intimate with Jesus if you're sick in your body right now being more intimate with Jesus is worth more than a healing in your body. I don't mean to 
to just devalue whatever sickness you're going through, but that's how much weight I'm putting on what it means to be intimate with the Lord. You're going through financial troubles right now. Hey, we're going to pray for it. But can I tell you, it means more instead of getting that paycheck or getting that job, it actually means more to be intimate with Jesus. But how can you be intimate with Jesus? Well, to be intimate with Jesus means that you have a relationship with him. And maybe you're watching this right now and you don't have a relationship with Christ. Maybe you've never come to that point where you've accepted him as your Lord and Savior. You know, uh, the Bible's so clear that if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, it's because sin is in between you and God. And that sin is all the stuff that we've done, every way that we've lived that's outside the boundaries of how God would want us to live. And in order to come to God the Father, we have to come to Jesus and we have to acknowledge what he did on the cross, which is dying and then rising after three days, defeating the grave. And, and he did that, why? So that it would make a way for us to come to God. And now all we have to do is come before Jesus and ask him to forgive us of our sins. It means admitting what we've done is wrong. Some, that, that's really tough because that hurts our pride. To admit that we've done things wrong, that attacks our pride. But it should attack our pride because pride is the root of all evil. And if we have pride, we can't come to God. And so we come to Jesus, we say, forgive me of my sin, and ask him to come into our life. And in that moment, his Holy Spirit comes and begins to live inside of us. Maybe you've never, ever experienced that before. Or maybe you did it a long, long time ago, but you walked away from God. You turned your back on God and church, all that kind of stuff. Well, I want to give you a chance to respond right now. So if that's you, St. James, that's me. I want to invite you to pray a simple prayer with me. It's a prayer reflecting what the Apostle Paul writes in Romans chapter 10 when he says that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. So I want to pray that prayer. So if that's you right now and you want to pray with me, please put your hand on your heart wherever you are and repeat these words with me. Everyone here is going to repeat these words with me as well. So say, say, dear Lord Jesus, I come to you right now and I ask you to forgive my sin. I believe that you died on the cross, but you rose again from my sin. So please come into my life. Be my Lord, be my savior, be my best friend. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen. If you prayed that prayer, that's the greatest thing. Come on, we are cheering. We are excited. If you pray that prayer, it is the greatest prayer, the greatest decision that you will ever make in your life. And we want to know that you prayed that prayer. Right now, please let us know. Type it in the, in the chat box in YouTube or in Facebook or in Kumu. Or if you're on an online platform, you can just click that box that says, I prayed that prayer. Please let us know because we want to contact you. Check the spam messages of your Facebook because we want to write to you and connect with you because the Christian journey is not meant to be done alone. It's, it's difficult enough in family, let alone if you're doing it by yourself. And so I want to encourage you, reach out to us so that we can pray with you and connect with you. You know, for the rest of us, I just want to encourage you. We're not going to have a big time of worship or, or even a big time of prayer because of this reason. This whole week, we're about to pray and fast. And I want to pray for you just right now and for all of us that are here, that this week, that you would really reach out for God. That whatever you're praying and believing for, and I'm praying, I'm praying along with you. We got different things that we're praying for corporately, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, every day we're praying for things corporately. But whatever your individual prayer is that you're praying, I'm believing with you. I am believing for that breakthrough. I'm believing for the increase, whatever it is, I'm believing for. But ultimately, you know what my greatest prayer is? Is that by the end of this week, whether God said yes or whether he said no, that you would be closer to him. What does the book of James says? It says this, that if you draw near to him, then he will draw near to you. Ultimately, whether the answer is yes or no, that conversation with God should lead us into that intimacy. So let me pray for you right now. Why don't you lift your hands wherever you are and everyone here, you can do it as well. And all our production guys too. God, I pray for every person with their hands lifted. Lord, this week as we enter into our, our week of praying and fasting, God, you see all the needs that we have. You know the needs that we have. God, I thank you for the financial provision that's coming. 
Lord, I thank you for the relationships restored. God, I thank you for the physical healings, the cancers to go in Jesus' name, the blood disorders and diseases to go, the, the protection against COVID and this, this virus, God. I pray for all those things, but ultimately above all, God, I pray that this would be a week where we draw close to you. That regardless of a yes or a no, that our intimacy with you would grow. So God, I pray, let husbands and wives pray together. Even for the first time, let it happen. Let families pray together. Let singles pray together, wherever you are in your life, that you would pray this week, that we would see breakthroughs and answered prayer. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen. Amen, amen. You know, I wanna encourage you that this week, uh, on Monday night, We've got a, uh, which is uh, tomorrow night, if you're watching this live, on Monday night, tomorrow night, uh, we've, we've got about a 45 minute little uh, prayer and worship time that I, I'm gonna be doing. I'm, I'm gonna be uh, uh, praying and, and I'm gonna get uh, Bea and Woolam along as well. We're gonna all pray together and worship. On Tuesday night, we've got our equipping course. On Wednesday night, we're gonna be having another prayer team. We're gonna get our team to come in just because it's prayer and fasting week. We wanna really take this opportunity. On Thursday night, we're gonna have a Taglish prayer meeting all in Taglish. And so if you uh, don't know how to speak Tagalog, uh, then just just come and it's just like you're, you're hearing tongues for an hour as people pray and sit in the presence. And then on Friday night, we're doing a presence night, uh, which is prayer and worship. And, and you know, we believe in our church that worship is prayer because we're singing to God and it's a conversation with God. It's just we're doing it with a melody and a harmony, not just speaking it out. And so I wanna encourage you this week, fast, some sort of food, get rid of distractions like social media. If you play video games on your phone, play less or just give it up for the week, especially uh, Mobile Legends, in Jesus' name, we break that addiction right now. Let it go, in Jesus' name, we break that addiction right now. And uh, get rid of the distractions. This week could be a week where you grow closer to God than you've ever been before. You know, if this is your first time that you've been at church, so glad that you're here, that you've joined with us. Please let us know whether it's in those comment boxes again, or you can scan the QR code or just connect with us online. We would love to get to know you better. I can't wait for next week. Next week, I'm preaching on the next value of our church that makes up our culture. I'm preaching on people next week because without people, we don't have a church. And so I'm, I'm excited for that. But I love you. God bless you. Have the greatest week you've ever had in your life in Jesus' name. Thank you so much for joining us today. We hope that you enjoyed the service. If you raise your hand and pray that prayer towards the end, we would love to connect with you. You can do so by scanning the QR code coming up on the screen right now, visiting favorite.church slash next, or if you're from the Philippines, you can reach us at 0917-77-FAVOR. We would love to tell you more about the decision that you made today and walk with you on this faith journey. If it's your first time on our favorite church service, please visit favorite.church slash next because if you do so, a member of our team will get in touch with you because we have a gift that we want to get into your hands. If you're watching online or on Kumu, don't forget to hit follow, subscribe to the channel, or bookmark the page. If you're watching on I Want, give this video a thumbs up. And if you're watching on TV, hey, we're so glad that you joined us today. Anyway, if you want to know when and where else you can watch our favorite church services, visit favorite.church schedule. And that is it for today. See you next week.